Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now there's been a notable shift in the tone of the Western media outlets recently. The local public for which the last three years have been presented with narratives about Russia facing significant economic challenges has required some serious clarification. Now Bloomberg has come to the supports of its Western propaganda colleagues in this regard. It says the Russian economy is demonstrating resilience and growth with its economic indicators showing that all sectors are outperforming expectations. Now this has prompted a rethink among those who advocate for sanctions on Russia as Moscow has been able to rely on two key pillars of support. Now in this regard it's to steel and gold they're looking. Now the authors at Bloomberg are striving to integrate the two seemingly contradictory assertions within their single text. That's that the Russian economy and the metallurgical sector, which are also allegedly largely isolated from society, a Russian society, has strategically leveraged it to its advantage. Now it's become evident that the metallurgical sector, particularly steel production at the facilities of the three largest Russian companies, has become a crucial link in the growth of residential and infrastructure of the construction sector. Now this is evident in both the newly acquired territories from the Ukraine where there's a significant among, amount of construction and restoration work following the conflict and it's also happening in the rest of the country. Now before I continue I'd like to make an appeal if you like and enjoy my videos you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com and further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm actually thanking you now for watching this video. Now a review of the market trends in the domestic steel industry in Russia reveals that during the first half of 2024 the domestic demand for steel of all types increased by an average of 6% while the cost at steel making plants rose between 5 and 15 percent. Unexpectedly this has proved to be a positive outcome because it's because of a decline in production and a decrease in profits in the countries of the rest of the world, particularly the metallurgical sector in Europe. Now one of the reasons for this is due to the significant intervention from China which has long been investing heavily at the state level in its own metallurgical sector and it's now engaging in aggressive dumping of steel on the markets of Western Europe which has the effect of reducing its competitors uh, <coughs> pricing to below the profitability threshold. Now steel making and other specialised production in Russia which the collective West spent a significant amount of time and resources to isolate have now found themselves in a very secure position. One of the main factors of course is that Russian steel companies are mostly part vertically integrated with their own coking coal and iron ore mines plus their treatment plants. Or they can buy it from other uh, Russian mining companies on the domestic market so they're not dependent on foreign imports or the vagaries of the prices. It's important to note that back in the boom years of the commodity surge from 2003 to 2008 and everybody had high profits, the Russian metallurgical companies invested heavily in modernization and new technology so the metallurgical sector is among the most modern and advanced anywhere in the world. Obviously having their own resource base insulates it from any serious fluctuations in raw material prices too. Now while in foreign markets they're experiencing turbulence and price volatility, Russian metallurgists have maintained their consistent order packages at the limits of their production capacities. Notably there's been no layoffs at their plants and in fact there's been active recruitment and training of new workers. Now Bloomberg provides a valuable insight into the construction sector and landscape in Moscow, highlighting some of the key developments taking place. Now, these include the completion of over 2 million square metres of residential space in the first half of 2024. Now given the average apartments 80 square metres, <coughs> that's 25,000 new apartments in just the first six months in one Russian city. 
There's also the expansion of highways with multiple bridge crossings in all directions. Now, remember the new Moscow to St. Petersburg motorway's just opened and a southbound extension to the highway will go down from Moscow to Kazan, which is 800 kilometres. So you can imagine the number of bridges and overpasses that's going to need. Another highway will link Kazan in the west with Yekaterinburg in the east, which is another huge distance of around 850 kilometres. You add in the start of the construction of 12 new metro stations in Moscow, plus the advanced plans for the National Space Centre, the amount of steel that is needed is actually growing all the time. Also a significant portion of steel is allocated to regional products as well as to the Ministry of Defence. Now, while the exact figures are not publicly available, there's reason to assume that the front line regards a significant amount of metal for combat equipment, um, as in uh, tanks and uh, military vehicles. So let's not make stancy generalizations. But at the end of last year, the Russian steelmakers had produced around 75.8 million tons. Now, that's only slightly below the record figures of 2021. Now, by the end of this year, the figure should reach around 76 million. Now, in terms of this, the World Steel Association has positioned Russia in fifth place globally, with the United States only being one place higher. With the difference between the two of them is only about 4 million tonnes. Now, I'd like to make an observation. At the beginning of the year, the World Steel Association analysts forecast a decline in global steel production, which has subsequently happened. I mean, even the head of the world's largest steel maker, which is the Chinese Boa Steel, has come out and said that the demand for steel in the world will drop, particularly in China. And this is due to the dramatic drop in construction in China and a recession in the rest of the world. I mean, in the case of Russia, the forecast was for a decline in demand and the production of approximately 6%, but actually there was the opposite. The actual outcome was uh, a net increase of the same level. I mean, consequently, the sanctioned uh, enterprises like Severstal and the Magnitogorsk Iron and Steelworks demonstrated an increase in their turnover during the first six months of 2024. I mean, the Novolopetsk plant, which is the only enterprise so far exempt from the direct restrictions and sanctions, has levered its uh, safety capsule to its advantage, and it's maintaining robust sales of its products, and particularly into the Western markets. Now, as I mentioned, the, uh, Bloomberg in their article mentioned gold. Now, a few years ago, Russia decided to get rid of the majority of its holdings in US dollars. It decided to focus on other financial instruments, currencies, and particularly gold. Now, a joint analysis by the IMF, the World Bank, and the World Gold Council was released just last week. Now, the list details the countries that were most active in purchasing physical gold between 2013 and 2023. Turkey was ranked third with an increase of 424 tonnes, China came second with an increase of 1,180 tonnes, and Russia led the way in gold purchases. It added 1,300 tonnes of yellow metal to the storage facilities in Moscow, St. Pete and Yekaterinburg. Now, it's been some time since Russia published exact details on its foreign and uh, gold and foreign reserves. But I can tell you that having covered the gold sector for in Russia for many years, that it has around 2,460 tons in its reserves. And that places Russia in fifth position globally, if you believe the figure of 8.5 thousand tons, which hasn't been audited in 1956 of the US, which makes Russia just behind France and Italy. However, that said, as of 2024, Russia is the second largest gold miner in the world. So when it buys gold, it's effectively getting a discount due to the fact that the mining companies sell it to the government and they also pay mineral extraction tax. Now, Russia will produce about 350 tons of gold in 2024, and that's worth around $25 billion. Plus, all Russian gold mining companies are Russian, so their profits stay in and are invested in Russia, and so are their tax revenues. Gold mining companies in Russia also mine in remote areas, so they create infrastructure and jobs in distant places, things like roads and power lines that benefit the local communities, plus they bring prosperity to the areas. 
Now it's worth noting that these very tons of gold have served to stabilize the financial system in Russia, supporting the ruble and enhancing its value. These are some of the instruments instrumental in weathering the initial wave of sanction, preventing hyperinflation and even a potential default. Subsequently, these funds have been invested in the real sectors of Russia and the construction of roads, residential properties, bridges, ships, aircraft, military equipment. And these factors gave rise to the drivers of economic growth, which the American, as at Bloomberg, were bold enough to report on with a critical eye. Now, just remember, Russia has a number of allies, the people, their faith and the love of the country. Now, the Russian economy has a number of key sectors, but steel and gold sectors are particularly significant. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Also, please do uh, use the comment section to communicate and interact with me because I try and get back to as many of you as I possibly can. Thank you.